Hi there, Mitch and I are here today to build a couple of bird cages. Yes, we're going to do something different. My helper peaches, our Senegal, is at home because it's about five degrees outside, so we're not going to travel with her. We're going to be building two cages from A&E, the 91818 and the 81818, both very similar, but the 900 series has a dome top. The 800 series is a play top. Being a smaller cage, it's only going to have one ladder. The bigger cages are going to have two. This is the box cage. This is actually the dome top, and this is how it arrives in your home. We've already unpacked the play top, so you can see some of the components. I'm not going to go through the whole unboxing, but I want you to see how we take it out of the box. Like most knockdown wrought iron cages, you're going to get four sides. The front and the back, the teepee to the right. The two sides, teepee to the left. And he supplies a very nice caster that screws in. And here's your first pro tip. Put your casters in first. This doesn't apply so much to the smaller cages, but by Installing the casters first, you'll be able to work on the cage upright rather than turning it on its side, installing the casters, than trying to put a 200-pound cage upright on casters. That's a slippery slope. So here we go. The casters screw in very easily, and we're not going to put them in all the way. You can see there is a lock nut here, and this will help adjust the height of the shaft to, comp to compensate for uneven floor surfaces. With the four casters installed, we can move on to the next step. Here's the front of the cage with the door opening outwards, so you know what direction to install it. Let's talk tools, one of my favorite subjects. These cages come with screws for assembly that have an Allen head. So they send you an Allen wrench, and this will take you forever. So here's a couple of choices that I advocate. One, chop this off right here and stick it into your drill. Many of you have seen these, and it's a typical um, Phillips bit driver. I get these, they're 5 32nd hex head drivers. I get them from McNeely's online, great website if you're into fasteners. And I just take that out, put that in, and I'm good to go. And it's going to really accelerate the assembly of the cage. So let's start now. There are three size bolts. Well, there's some smaller ones for attachments later, but for assembling the main cage going through from one section to another, we're going to use the middle length. It's nice to have an assistant, but if you don't, what I do is I have two of the middle length bolts in my hand and I'm going to insert the first one through the frame, the front of the cage, and then finger tighten it just so I can get a couple of threads started and I'm going to do the same with the middle and finger tighten it. And now I have basically a kickstand for the front of the cage and we can move forward. I put all three screws in the right and now I'm moving on to the left side of the cage. I've got the top screw in. You can see the cage is upright with no help. I've now got the six screws on for the front of the cage to the two sides. Just thumb tighten. I can move on to the back of the cage. It's easier if I insert the screw first. I lift and thumb tighten.
I've done the middle, line up the bottom, should go in pretty straightforward. I might want to separate it a little, and if you notice, nothing has been tightened other than with my fingers. We're going to install the roof of the cage. Just to make it really simple, I've removed four of the front bolts so this easily goes in. And I've got it now facing the right direction with the cross supports going right to left. I'm going to put this into or lay this on top of the rear support. And then I'm going to close the cage up. And so it now sits on the top support here. Let me get a couple of screws and we'll take a picture. So here's the roof of the cage with the cross members going right to left. And it's sitting on a bracket in the back of the cage. And if you can see this here, on the front of the cage, these two glides will handle the tray, one of our final things to add to the cage. So I've attached the last uh, three screws to the uh, back of the cage and everything is finger tight and we do this intentionally. It's loose, but it's sturdy enough to continue working on. Now, we're going to put on the ladder, and you can see, oops, the ladder's a little too wide for the case. That's okay, because it's metal and it's flexible. When I showed you the three bolts before, this was the shortest of the three. Well, this is a fourth bolt with a slightly smaller diameter. Can we see that there? There we go. And we're going to attach the... Um, Ladder to the top of the cage now. Again, I'm going to finger tighten it. Get it started. And this, by the way, I've switched back. This has a Phillips head. And we're going to tighten this all the way. Now I'm going to tighten this down all the way. Listen for the clicks on the drill as it stops turning. Hear that? All electric drills have this little ring. Not a lot of people understand. And this is actually a clutch. And for our purposes, I like to set our clutch at 10 or 11. And so what happens is, if I apply too much pressure, the drill stops. We want that to happen so we don't strip the screws. With the ladder in place, I'm ready to tighten the rest of the screws on the body of the cage. You can hear, oops. You can hear the drill slip as we tighten the screws. We're ready to put on the hard to defeat feeder door locks. And I neglected to mention that the feeder side, the feeder door side can go on either side of the cage. It's side agnostic. If you read our blog, you'll know that birds like privacy and you should always have the cage against two corners. So the side that you put this on is determined by the cage placement. These are your deadbolts, so to speak, for your cage feeder doors. So we're going to slip the spring onto the shaft of the deadbolt, and then we're going to slip the deadbolt into the outer shaft, keeping the tongue. This is going to face out when the door is closed. And now I'm going to push this in until I can see, you can see here, how the shaft comes out of the lock assembly channel. Rinse and repeat. We're going to get this on now, tighten it, shut the door. To help your bird from escaping, 
as you know, many birds are what we call Houdinis. We're going to loosen the knob, slide this to the right, and allow the bird to come out. Now the trick is, we're going to slide that to the right. After we're done changing the dish, now we're going to tighten it, making it much more difficult for your bird to escape through a feeder dish door. For the holders, I like to take advantage of the magnetic properties on my uh, drill so I can start it and just get it spun around like that. With the holders in place, I can now tighten them up. Once again, relying on the clutch so I don't strip the screws. There we go. Next comes the door lock, looking something very similar to a window lock, don't you think? We're going to put this part of the lock on first, and I'll explain why in a minute. It has to do with uh, getting it adjusted properly. Oh, I already had the screw in there, that's why I couldn't find it. Let's get that. Now I can tighten this down. Now I'm putting the locking portion on. I'm going to move the lever out of the way just a little so I can get in there. And again, I'm keeping it loose until I tighten the lock. I actually lock the lock, and now I'm going to tighten it. And that's how we know how to adjust the lock properly so that when we open it, We cut this, it works quite easily. And that's a simple way to adjust the lock. Let's talk about a redundant door lock and very nice, stylish, any uh, nameplate. We're going to put this right up here. And we call it a redundant lock so that. If I open this up and get distracted, I still can't easily open up the cage without getting this out of the way. And it's a simple gravity operated, simple as it gets. We're going to put the secondary lock on down here. And that will help retain the grill or the bottom of the cage. So, as we say, the birds don't walk it out. We like to keep newspaper on the bottom of that or even remove it and put newspaper on the tray that I'm going to insert here. We like to keep it clean because you're going to clean it so much with water, it's going to rust. Newspaper is great. Your birds shred it. Who cares? That's what they're supposed to do. But uh, this is going to help keep your cage floor clean where all the refuse, food particulate, and poop goes. Now we're going to take these two long bolts with, uh, these are Phillips heads, and we're going to attach the feeder assembly and perch to the top of the cage. I've got the assembly, including the top perch. I've got the screws. Um, already in with the washers at the uh, on top of the wood. So I'm just going to tilt. This. So I'm going to tilt this back and clamp onto it with my mini channel lock, and we're going to tighten this down. A little more. Gonna tighten this down. All the way. There we go. Let's do the other screw. Those are pretty tight. We can add our feeder dishes now and our toy hook. Give the bird something to do. We're gonna slip in the top 
refuse straw that'll keep the bird from pooping down in the cage. Something you can also consider. If you remove this, the light will come down through the cage bars and you can just cover this with newspaper. The choice is yours. It's hard to see, but I have this at a slight angle, so I have this pulled to the front, as close as I can get to the front of this set of bars, and then I scooch it onto that second bar, and I pulled the cage slightly apart, and I rely on the flexibility of the metal to get that in. We talked at the beginning of the video about showing you the dome top version of the cage and we're paring down inside one that I've already uh, built about 90% of the way. I wanted to illustrate one thing about the feeder dishes that when they're in the holder it's very hard for them to come out because the actual bar here is preventing the bird from tossing it. Good information, especially if you have big birds that like to toss food dishes. If you open up the feeder dish, you can easily remove the bowl. I want to show you something. While well, you have the opportunity, one of my favorite topics you can see that this is tubular steel and it has corners but we know it also has holes and if you look at the where are we at? there we go if you look at the play top here it's hollow as in all of the metal here is hollow which is why we don't want to power wash a cage because the powder coating will protect the outer metal, it will not protect the inner metal, and your cage will accelerate the rust from the inside out. So we saw the locking mechanism in the uh, dome top cage. So I'm going to put uh, our bowls in. We're going to lock the door. Which brings us to our last component. Sea guards. Our professional opinion states that we are not advocates of seed guards. They have sharp edges that can be harmful to small humans, pets, big humans rubbing their knees on them, can tear up drywall, paneling, and so forth. And it really doesn't keep your cage area any cleaner. You end up having more to clean. And in order to take these on and off, you're going to have to, whoops, use a lot of nuts and bolts. So we have other videos on how to keep your cage clean. Put these on the floor of a closet where they can't fall into anybody and become a weapon. So we talked about at the beginning of the video the difference between the play top and the dome top. The play top is great because you now have a place to put your bird once it makes it out of the cage. Refuse falls here. I would keep newspaper here or you can actually take this out. More light can come into the cage. You can put newspaper here. You've got choices. It's always good to have choices. Button this up. Redundant. Main lock. Locked. A dome top has no grate at the top, and it has a dome, and I'm not trying to be facetious here, and this might come into play with longer tail birds, the smaller macaws like the nobles. Um, this might be a little too small for military, but, um, you know, Indian ringnecks have long tails, cockatiels have long tails. So, um, it's, sometimes it's better to have the dome top. The bird's still going to climb to the top of the cage, but you give the bird more head and tail room. So let's walk through the final assembly. So we have two parts to the dome. We're going to put it on each side, one at a time.
So these are going to go in. We have the holes going into the receptor holes in the frame. And it's actually going to rest. There's two half circle loops to retain the weight of the roof so that the screws themselves are not holding it in all together. Now I've added two halves of the dome and I put in the four screws and everything is loose. I have two more screws that I have to put in up here. These screws can prove to be a bit cantankerous to make it through the entire square channel. So let me give you a pro tip. Let's insert the screw until it can't go any farther. But you can see that the bar here is precluding the screw from going in. So I'm going to take a screwdriver and ever so gently just kind of bend it down to get me on a straight angle so I can get the screw in all the way. And you bend it up slightly. Metal is far more flexible than we get it credit for. Now we can finish up the assembly here. Here. That one's now tight. I've kept all the screws loose to make sure this goes in without a big problem. I don't have to force it in. So everything's a little loose now. I'm going to go through the um, six mainframe screws and uh, the screws up here and I can tighten up everything and we can wrap this project up. We talked briefly about the casters at the beginning and they are adjustable up and down and then there is a locking nut right here. So once you get them to the proper height, you can lock it in place and you're ready to go. Play top on the left, dome top on the right. These are 18 by 18. The procedure for building either cage, whether it be 24 by 22, 32 by 23, 36 by 28, 40 by 30, or the ginormous 48 by 36, the procedure is the same. It's just a little more weight, and the bigger the cage, you probably want to get some help in there. But, as I've said, the procedure is the same for all 10 I'm sorry, 12 sizes of cages. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.